All right, folks, today's Reddit story from r slash entitled people is full of entitlement, family drama, and standing your ground. This man's family literally tries to steal his house, and the level of entitlement will make your blood boil. All righty, let's dive in. My parents told my brother that he could take my house and I could just live in the camper in the backyard because I'm single and he has a wife and kids, posted by Camper Nomad. I'll warn everyone here that this is going to be very long. I also really don't care who believes this. It's just so crazy that I don't blame anyone who calls BS. I won't argue about it. But this happened to me. I also really don't care if anyone in my family sees this. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. But I'm also not going to reveal any details that would clue anyone into who I am that doesn't already know me. I'm a single man in my early 30s. I've got a brother who's 29, and he's already got four kids now. He had his first at 22 and the second followed a year later, then the third two years after that, and the fourth is the most recently born a couple months ago. His wife, my sister-in-law, and I do not get along as she always likes to try and get a rise out of me by acting superior, then turns into an extreme self-victimizing drama queen if I retaliated against her in any way. She can cry in an instant and can put on an extremely convincing show to get sympathy from just about anyone. My parents and brother absolutely adore her, even though they know exactly how she really is and just don't care. She's very good-looking, I'll give her that. But she's so awful that I could never be attracted to her. She also refuses to get any sort of job, even though she has a college degree and my mother willingly helps with the kids all day. So their finances are entirely dependent on my brother. This also means they can't afford to live anywhere but my parents' house, and privacy is a bit of an issue with all of them under one roof in a three-bedroom house that was built in the 60s. Growing up, my younger brother was also the obvious favorite. We're three years apart in age, but he developed a superiority complex because I was badly punished if I retaliated against his antics in any way back then. It was obvious my parents cared for him a lot more because he got the lion's share of everything unless people called them out on it, which did happen a fair bit by other members of the family, which is why my parents packed us all up and moved us about 150 miles away from them so they generally would only see us on holiday since it was a three-hour drive. My brother got physically abusive towards me on a number of occasions, flirted relentlessly with my first girlfriend to the point she broke up with me, and laughed at any misfortune I had, and my parents just told me to suck it up whenever I was upset about it. I only got equal treatment when my parents wanted to keep up appearances. I admit it was rather funny to see the looks on their faces whenever they had to treat me equal to my brother on birthdays and Christmas, because other people were present. We had relatives that were very nosy and loved gossiping drama. So my parents did their best to hide what was really going on and threatened to take all my stuff away if I didn't keep my mouth shut. If anything, it just made my parents celebrate more when I turned 18 and moved out because it meant they no longer had to provide for me. I wasn't even done with high school yet when I moved out, but couch surfing was far better than living with them. I was low contact ever since leaving home. They didn't even show up for my high school graduation, but I really didn't care. From that point on, I would usually only see my parents and brother on holidays like the rest of the family. The start of the 2020 pandemic was not kind to me. I lost my job and couldn't renew the lease on my condo because my roommate also lost his job and neither of us could afford the place on unemployment money. It was a rented two-bedroom condo that I really loved. As the lease was ending, my roommate left early to move back in with relatives, and I had to sell nearly all of my stuff because I was soon going to be homeless if I didn't downsize to an extreme. I really shouldn't have rented a place that was so expensive, but I liked living the high life, until that life wasn't kind to me, and I realized I should have been living somewhere far cheaper so I could have saved more money to fall back on. But I had a plan. I own a truck simply for the fact that I've always loved trucks, so I found a $1,000 camper in good shape and put it on my truck just so I could live out of it for a while. It was supposed to be temporary, but I ended up living out of it far longer than I ever thought. I originally was hoping to be able to live out of the camper at my parents' house, where my brother and his family still reside as well. But when I asked my parents to let me stay for a while, they told me they had a full house and didn't want me there. Plus, we hadn't exactly gotten along in the past decade. They said they'd only agree to let me park my camper there if I paid them basically what it had cost to rent an apartment in my area. That was way too much just to park my camper. I was jobless 
and trying to save as much of my unemployment money as I could till I could find a new job. I may as well be living in an apartment with that rent price they were asking. My parents called my camper an eyesore and told me to take a hike since we couldn't come to an agreement, and my sister-in-law thought it was absolutely hilarious I had to live in a camper. My brother joined her in pointing at and mocking me while calling me a homeless bum. I parked my truck-slash-camper in a store parking lot to sleep on the first night that I had nowhere else to go. I felt scared out of my mind that someone might try to break in. Suffice to say, I didn't sleep well that night. There was nowhere else I could go, as any other relatives that owned houses were fairly far away, and all my friends were all apartment people. And I was pretty attached to my area as well, so I didn't want to just leave. I'd also had my mail forwarded to a friend's apartment— it was the only way I could still get my mail anymore. Finding a stable place to park was pretty difficult. I went looking around to try and find a job similar to my old one. It took months of living the nomadic camper life. In that time, I had to deal with a lot. Everything from beggars and drug addicts to people demanding I leave because my camper was an eyesore. At one point, someone who told me to move claimed to be with a homeowners association, HOA. I wasn't even parked on a street with houses, and when I questioned what HOA, they got incredibly belligerent and threatened me. I moved my camper anyway, just to avoid the trouble. In order to have a steady supply of electricity, I learned to use a long extension cord to plug in anywhere I could to recharge my camper batteries. This meant sneaking around and plugging it into an outside outlet of a random building while parked on a street. I know that's a crummy thing to do, but I had to keep my batteries charged so my refrigerator would stay cold. I had a small solar power bank for recharging my phone, but I didn't have anything like a generator, and generators are noisy and require fuel anyway. So I did what I had to do. After months of living like that, I finally managed to get a new job. I had to move to the neighboring city to find a job that didn't involve retail. I worked retail while in college and promised myself never again. Though I was nearly ready to break that promise, I was still getting unemployment money, but I had no stable place to live while receiving it, and I didn't want to still be jobless when it ran out. Plus, I was bored out of my mind. I had little else to do but read, watch movies on a small portable DVD player, use my phone or laptop, and keep note of where I could park and what local public bathrooms I could use. I kind of envy that the Japanese have public bathhouses. We could really use stuff like that over here. When I finally landed a new job, I practically lived in the back lot of the building by the warehouse in old employee parking spaces, literally no one else seemed to bother using because they were so far in the back that the area was borderline forgotten. My boss-slash-company owner actually liked this arrangement because I was willingly available to take any shift I could get, so long as I had enough sleep. He even let me take the camper off my truck and set it up in one of the spaces so I could drive around without it. Not exactly sure if this was legal, but no one bothered us about it. The entire time I lived back there, I didn't have to deal with many trespassers. There were a few, but the security guards escorted them out. I was pretty much on call almost all the time when they needed me and was working virtually every day of the week. My boss let me plug my camper into the building for power and water, and I paid a small amount of rent by working for free on Sundays when no one else was in the office but the janitor and security guard. Beyond that, I usually had to shower at a friend's apartment or at my local gym as the camper didn't have a shower in it and only a portable toilet. And I didn't want to fill it because emptying it is a nasty chore. So I used other bathrooms as often as I could. I had a key to the warehouse and could go in to use the bathroom there at any hour. I was even on a first-name basis with the night security guard. He's since become one of my closest friends. The camper was easy to heat in the winter with a small electric heater. Summers were not fun, though. The camper didn't have AC, so I had to get a used portable air conditioner just to make it bearable. I made a lot of overtime pay and hands-on learned some new skills from other employees. Eventually, midway into this year, I landed a better position in the company as a supervisor and started making a better salary than my old job. That's when I decided I wanted a house. The scare I'd gotten from losing my condo made me realize I needed something much more stable for the long term. I looked around for something close to my work and just two miles away found a three-bedroom manufactured home on a small property. But I managed to get it for $10,000 less than the asking price somehow. 
I used nearly my entire savings for a down payment and got approved for a home loan. I finally didn't have to live in a camper anymore. There was enough space for me to back my truck in behind the house to take the camper off to set it up in the backyard. So I put it there as its own little building just in case I want to use it again. When I was fully settled in the house, I was dumb enough to brag about it on my Facebook. My family saw the post, and that's where this problem really starts. After a few weeks, my parents and brother, along with his family, came to visit completely unannounced to have a tour of my home. I didn't even give them my address. So how they found out where I live, I still don't know. None of my friends have confessed, and no prior family members visited me before that. So I wonder if they stalked me at work and followed me home or something. It really wouldn't surprise me. Once I opened the door, they practically all shoved their way in like rambunctious tourists, then just started making themselves at home. They all kept poking around, and my sister-in-law had this creepy smirk that she was repeatedly flashing me. And it was only later that I figured out why, and it made me madder than a bull on steroids that just got stung by a hornet. My parents were constantly talking about how I've got so much extra space now, and it's too much for someone like me who has no wife or kids. Sure, not now, but maybe someday. And my brother kept remarking about how there was more space than our parents' house. And my house was closer to his job, too. Red flags all around, I know. Eventually, my brother asked me to speak privately. Everyone else suddenly left the room and piled out onto the front porch. That's what finally made me realize they'd planned something. My brother, let's call him Dan for the sake of simplicity, said the house was too much for me alone and I should let him move in with his family because his wife is pregnant with child number four, and my house is much closer to his job. He pointed out that I already have the camper, so I could just live in that outside while they live in the main house. And I'd like to point out that Dan never once spoke of offering rent. Mind you, he's got a good job. He also started talking about how there would be changes and even curfews, and that I couldn't just walk in at any time without prior notice. If it weren't my brother, I'd think the person I was talking to had lost their mind. But Dan lost his marbles long ago thanks to our parents treating him like he was the center of the world. I tried to speak, but he kept talking over me as if I had no say in the matter. There was no way in hell I'd rent my house or parts of my house to him. Other people maybe, just so I can pay the mortgage off more easily. But certainly not him or his nasty wife. I've heard of this exact kind of situation in videos online many times, and never once did I think I'd actually live it because I thought it so ludicrous. But my parents, brother and sister-in-law, do all fit the bill for a bunch of narcissistic entitled crazies. So I picked up my phone and set it to start recording, then just held on to it. Dan didn't even seem to care or notice that I'd done this and just sat there with his arms waving around while talking about all the reasons of why he needed my house then went from saying that to acting like it was a done deal and trying to reach out his hand to shake mine. That's when I finally showed my backbone and said, hell no. And I said it loud enough that Dan stumbled backward for a second. I'd rarely ever raised my voice to him on that level because I was punished by our parents whenever I did. But this was my house, not theirs. My spine can be as shiny as it wants here. I stood up and then told him that my house was not up for grabs and acting like I'll let him move in just because they want it won't make it happen. I bought my house for me, and it's not my fault he keeps having more kids and has to keep living with our parents because he can't afford to move out. Dan got as physically close to me as he could without actually touching me and said that I didn't deserve the house, and he needed a better place for his family to live. I laughed back in his face and said that was total BS because I worked hard to be able to buy my house. Of course I deserved it. Dan started yelling that I have no wife or kids and I don't need all the space, so I may as well give it to him. I said I'm not giving him anything and he never even offered to pay me rent. If I let him move in, I'd still be covering the entire mortgage on my own house without even being able to live in my own house. Then Dan told me that he shouldn't have to pay rent because his family comes first and our parents said I was going to do this and that I will. I yelled as if their word was law or something and told Dan that they did not have the right or power to give my house to him. Then, right on cue, my parents and sister-in-law barged back in through the front door and surrounded me to try and force me to agree. There was a lot of fighting. But to sum it up from this point on, I heard the line, just do it for Dan, way more times than I can remember. In the fight, I told them all they don't have a say in my life or my house, and to get out before I called the cops. My sister-in-law screamed the loudest at me about how she was pregnant again, 
and I can't do this to her. I said I did nothing to her. She just assumed she could take and take from me like I would just allow it. I had no obligation to her or her family. Then I called her a stuck-up B-word who never had any respect for me. So I don't care what she thinks or how many kids she has. I have no sympathy for her. She won't be living in my house. Well, that made her angry enough to attack me. She got in one good hit on my face and tried to do more, but my brother held her back, kicking and screaming. She kept demanding he let her go so she could scratch my eyes out. The phone I was holding recorded pretty much everything, so I held it up and said I was going to call police if they didn't leave right away. My parents told Dan they were leaving. Then my mother said that I had a week to come to my senses. I told her I won't be and to not come back. Then I told my sister-in-law that my phone recorded everything, and if she tries anything, I'll press charges for assault. She screamed at me and then stormed out loudly crying with her face in her hands. My mother was the last one out the door and said that I better do this for Dan and my sister-in-law. I responded by telling her I won't be. Wow! Folks, just wow! I've seen some entitled people in my time, but these folks, they deserve an Olympic medal in entitlement. I mean, the audacity! It's like they took a look at this guy's life and thought, Hmm, nice place you've got there. Mind if we just take it? And poor Dan, it seems he's been taking advice from the School of Overpopulation and Underplanning. Let's just keep popping out kids and hope that Big Bro's going to fund our little utopia, shall we? And the sister-in-law, man, she really thought she was on some soap opera? Scratch your eyes out? Really, Karen? Way to keep it classy. Now, our protagonist. I gotta give it up to him. The man's got backbone. From being on the verge of homelessness to rising from the ashes like a magnificent phoenix, buying a house, and then defending it like a champ. You know what they say, not all heroes wear capes. Some just hold firm boundaries and refuse to be steamrolled by their entitled families. Ugh, this story made me so angry. Hey, wait! As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And let me know what you would have done if you were in this crazy situation in the comments below. Anyway, stay safe out there in that crazy world. Much love. Peace.